I think there are three components that I would put that. First of all, it is Africa. Secondly, it's investment. And thirdly, for me, it's about protecting that investment through insurance, which is what I do at the African Risk Capacity. But another way of putting that is protecting the investment through risk management mm -hmm. and risk mitigation systems. So that combination and being able to find an alliance of different people and different players really makes it very important for us to be here. I love the way that the president put it today, President uh, Ramaphosa, that Africa is not rising, Africa is moving. And if it's moving, we've got to protect the assets that it is building. So for me, this is very, very exciting. I hear there's a very interesting initiative that you have in the works, um, disaster risk financing. Can you talk us through what that is and what you're trying plan to achieve with that? So this is an agreement, I think you're referring to the agreement that we've got with the Africa Development uh, uh, Bank. I really want to commend President Adesina and his team for bringing the concept of managing the risk affiliated with climate, so drought, flood, tropical cyclone, into an integral component of how we do investment, sustainable investment in the long term. So the facility we have now with the African Development Bank, we just it got through their board last week. We're all very excited about it. We've been working at it for the last two years. And basically what it will do is to help our countries on the protection and risk mitigation side to go through a process of capacity building to understand the impacts the risks affiliated country by country in relation to climate related disasters. So when you have a drought, when you have a flood, when you have a tropical cyclone, based on historical information, what does it cost to rehabilitate families? And so the facility that we have now is going to be an all round, all encompassing assistance to countries to first of all assess that risk, but also to help them pay the premiums, given that normally that would come off the national fiscus and those balance sheets are extremely constrained at the moment. So it's a five-year facility, and we will learn from that and hopefully grow. No, I mean, indeed. Uh, but my question to you is, is, will this facility be enough? Because, I mean, we have seen the, the devastation that climate change has wrecked across uh, many of our economies uh, via droughts, uh, via even earthquakes, uh, killing mm -hmm. hundreds, if not uh, millions of, of, of Africans. In those instances, we've seen these countries reach out to international organizations for aid uh, to help uh, some of the afflicted uh, find a home, even have mm -hmm. food. This facility, would, 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 will it be enough to, to, to address this? That's an excellent and poignant question. The problem we have is huge in magnitude. I've heard in the last two days two figures that are contradictory. Six out of ten of the top growing countries economically are going to come out of Africa. Mm -hmm. Yet seven out of ten of the most impacted countries adversely impacted by the impacts of climate change are also going to come out of Africa. Mm -hmm. So the wealth that we will be building with the six out of 10 could very well be wiped out by the seven out of 10 mm -hmm. figure. So there can never be enough amount of money thrown at this problem. The intensity, the frequency of the droughts that we are having now, of the floods that we are having now are unprecedented. On the other hand, whilst we have always relied on humanitarian aid, that is also become, going to become questionable because we've seen in the international world, in the US last year, they were hit by three hurricanes in quick succession. They did not have enough money to deal with the problem. They still do not have enough money. They still have not rehabilitated people from New Orleans. So it is time for Africa to take the bull by the horns and start managing our own affairs. Let's be preemptive. Humanitarian will always be there. The envelope is too large to fill. So your question is a fundamental question, and I take this opportunity to say, no, it is not enough. Mm -hmm. But I do commend AFDB for saying, let us take that first step, and hopefully we can use that as a catalytic platform from which to then bring in other players, some of whom are around here, to participate with this. So thank you. That's a great question. In your engagement with countries, while some countries might have the wherewithal to invest in insurance against climate change, some don't have the balance sheet to support support that. How are you helping those countries, you know, who have not been able to meet up with the premiums, you know, to have a plan whatsoever to help because we understand the impact on food security mm -hmm. on this country. So food security, we say 31% of Africans are food insecure. 
today. And again, I, I put the statistic out there in the context of the growth story, the moving forward story. 31% of our population is food insecure. So this is a real problem. Mm -hmm. So our countries, we must admit, when the concept of African risk capacity was mooted in 2012, they, this was the Africa rising story. So the balance sheets of our countries, nobody really looked at the affordability question. It has come to bite us now. What is giving us a lot of hope is that this is a company that has been set up under the African Union. So it belongs to the African sovereign. Sure. The whole concept of capacity building, awareness creation, that is done with the countries over a long period of time. On the funding side, on the insurance company, which is what I run, every time a country pays a premium, a part of that premium cost goes towards acquiring a stake in the company. So that over a period of time, actually the African sovereigns themselves will own the insurance company. And so at the moment, it is a very tight uh, requirement and ask on their balance sheets. What pleases me is that many of our countries continue to participate. In the last five years, we've had, so AU set it up, so it's 54 countries. 33 countries have signed a memorandum of understanding in five years, which means we can start working with them, sure. capacity building and all of that. Eight countries have actually bought insurance. They have paid $60 million year to date on their national balance sheet, buying coverage of $400 million. In 2014, we paid out $34 million to 2014 and 2017 to four countries. That has impacted two million households and saved one million livestock. So in five years, I think that's quite a great story. <laughs> and we need to just mobilize and build on it and keep yeah. some scale.